thanks. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about community online engagement and participation, and I've been asked by Peter to, to cover these uh, three topics. So just a little bit of background about our community of practice. We launched in November of 2016, have around 1,500 members around the world. And I think it's key to highlight that the facilitators of our community who are consultants, they are technical experts in their field. And, and you'll, you'll see perhaps why this is so relevant uh, later on. And we also have a dedicated communications lead with, um, you know, a, a journalism background and, and a facilitation background in our community. So we have three types of uh, engagements that we use D groups for. We put out calls for content to be included in other Finequity channels. We see ourselves as helping our members to reach new audiences. We have a we asked you answered uh, function which helps us to collate materials from the community people are always looking for tools i think that's even something that came up here and then we have our what we call d groups dialogues which is what i'll be speaking a bit about um, today and this is where we sort of get the engagement amongst our community members have the conversations take them online the conversations that we'd usually have in a workshop or in a room at an event. So the three keys I think to sustaining engagement over time in our D group dialogues is to do them regularly, obviously, and they can be initiated either by our community facilitators or by members of the community who have some, a challenge that they want to uh, discuss. Um, we try to empower our members to take initiative. We do that in, in multiple ways, but I think the best way is actually our really close one-on-one um, -on -one, um, mentorship with our members. We speak to them uh, regularly on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We walk them through the process. We build their confidence to, to share online. Often people struggle with that. They reach out to us and they say, can you post this for us? And we say, no, you can post it yourself and here's how you do it and here's how we how we recommend that you know you you get responses by phrasing your call to action in this way and we also of course have uh, guides that we've posted on our website and i'll share the link to that later so people can go in their own time to learn and finally enhancing the value so every time we have a d groups dialogue we produce a synthesis from it i think this is something that kf for KM for Dev does as well. Um, so that those who missed it or those who couldn't quite follow along properly or those who want to refer to it, refer back to it later, have something to refer to. So to ensure uh, inclusivity, I have these, these four points that I'll quickly cover. The first is, of course, to prime the community, let people know it's coming so they can prepare their participation. You know, we advertise on Twitter and D group and, and so forth. And we reach out bilaterally in advance to tell people, you know, that we'll be doing this. We, um, we get co-hosts to facilitate these dialogues, members of our community, who help to do things like send out an initial framing document for what it is that we're going to uh, discuss. Um, and then we, of course, because our facilitators are technical experts, they are, they are helpful in identifying and motivating key participants. So we might reach out to someone behind the scenes and say, we know that you've produced this. It would be very constructive to this conversation we're hosting. Would you please share it with a few uh, thoughts? So that's just an example. And finally, we do active facilitation. This is um, overlaps a little bit with the third one, but we of course also, it's a moderated list. So we prevent all the thank you, nice to hear from you from, from going out. We don't want to kind of uh, spam our members and have accidental emails go to the group. Um, very quickly on what to avoid, this is based on personal experience uh, from Finequity, just two items. The first is not building enough momentum. That's my timer. First is not building enough momentum on a single channel. We used to have a channel for each working groups, but we decided to bring it all together into one space so that people could really see the richness of what was going on and be motivated to, to participate. And finally, um, not using a channel that meets your members where they are at. We found that 
people need to get this into their inboxes. That's what's going to engage them. We tried Slack, for example, and it was just too much sign in for people. You know, they weren't already on that platform. Um, you know, LinkedIn as well. People use it for a different purpose. People didn't want to engage in conversation and in, in comment sections for, for things that were posted on LinkedIn. So we, we had to meet our members where they were at and we had to bring it directly into their inboxes. I'll just end with this slide. I think maybe the presentations will be shared later. Um, but you can, um, to see, uh, you know, some of the descriptions of, of how we do these things, I've, I've provided some links here. So that's my five minutes up. I'm surprised I kept the time. Thank you.